You're listening to the LJS Podcast, brought to you by LearnJazzStandards.com. If you get value out of today's episode, consider adding value back by leaving us a one-time monthly or annual donation at LearnJazzStandards.com slash support. We appreciate your help. All right, what's up, everybody? My name is Brent. Welcome to the LGS Podcast, and you're listening to episode 32, which today I'm going to get a little bit more personal than I normally do. When I was thinking about what to talk about on today's podcast, I was trying to think of jazz advice or music advice that I had wished someone would have given me years ago, things that maybe I've I've learned throughout my journey playing music, pursuing jazz, pursuing uh, music, just becoming a better musician, and things that I've, I've learned through trial and error maybe, or, or different things that now looking back, I think, oh, I wish I would have known that a long time ago. So today, I'm going to share a good handful of those things with you. But before we get into that, I just want to invite you, if you haven't already, to, to sign up for our newsletter and to become a part of the Learn Jazz Standards community. Signing up for our newsletter, subscribing to our newsletter is really the best way to get connected with us, to get jazz lessons and jazz advice straight to your inbox, and to really get connected. And and truly, those that subscribe to our newsletter are getting things that just regular listeners and regular readers are not getting. So if you haven't done that yet, go to learnjazzstandards.com slash newsletter and sign up for that there and as a special little perk for doing that you also get our free ebook a jazz guide to practicing so it's definitely worth uh, doing this and becoming part of the learn jazz standards community so i do encourage you to do that if you have not done that yet Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and jump right into this episode talking about this jazz advice, this music advice that I wish I would have known, things that I've learned throughout my journey in music. All right, here we go. Okay, so the first piece of musical advice that I wish someone would have given me a long time ago is pretty simple and it is relax relax i wish someone would have told me just to relax to not take life so seriously to not take music so seriously uh you know a lot of times uh, especially when i was in college and i was really just gung-ho about practicing jazz and becoming a better jazz musician and you know I had started learning jazz a little bit late I started uh, really getting into jazz and studying it when I was 18 years old in a lot of ways I felt like I was a little bit behind uh, some other of my peers who had been studying jazz for for a while and were in college and so I worked really hard and that did pay off for me that did pay dividends the hard work that I put in during those years and the many hours of, of focused practice that I did, but I also, in the process of doing that, forgot that music should be fun, and I needed to remember why I got into it in the first place. It's easy when you get too uh, obsessed with becoming a better musician uh, to start forgetting what you're doing it for, the joy that you got out of playing the music in the first place. So one thing that you really need to think about is just relaxing. If you're starting to feel like music is becoming stressful to you, if studying jazz in particular is becoming stressful for you, sit back and relax. And maybe that means that you actually put your instrument away or you just stop playing for a little bit. I'm not saying a long time. I'm not saying quit, give up, or run away from your anxieties or fears. I'm saying maybe that means, okay, I'm creating an unhealthy relationship with my with my instrument, with the music that I'm pursuing, and I need to step back for a second and reevaluate things. What am I doing this for? Why did I start doing it in the first place? Those are the questions you really need to ask yourself, and you need to relax, because if you're not relaxed, you're probably not going to create great music. In my experience, whenever I've entered into a playing situation or even the practice room with anxiety, anxiety and stress about my music and taking it too seriously, I don't normally end up doing so well. I don't perform to the best of my abilities. So relaxation is a huge thing and it can't be overrated. You really need to focus on this. I think we all need to remember from time to time 
that we are lucky to be able to play music. We're lucky to have access to music. We're lucky to to be able to sit down for those moments and and play music. Music is a big deal. Not everybody in this world has access to music. Not everybody has access to music education and we have to remember that. We have to be thankful that we get to do that. You know, it's a privilege. So play have fun. Try to remember that mysterious wonder you felt when you first met music uh, or maybe when you first met jazz. Okay, so relax. Remember to relax. That's some advice I really wish someone had given me years ago. Now, kind of going off of that a little bit, the next piece of advice uh, I wish someone would have given me is don't be so hard on yourself, okay? This really uh, kind of piggybacks off of this because when you're too serious about the music, when you're too obsessed about becoming a better player, it can manifest itself in a negative way sometimes, which is you start sort of feeling self-loathing towards yourself, towards your music. Oh, I didn't play very well. I don't do this very well. Oh, that sucked. This sucked. And you start piling on this negativity and and these bad feelings upon yourself and your music instead of just embracing where you are right now with your skill levels and your abilities and building off of that to become a better jazz player and approaching it in a positive light. And, And oftentimes, one thing that causes us to be hard on ourselves is we start comparing ourselves with others. Oh, what a mistake, comparing ourselves with others. And I've said this before on this podcast. I've said this in blog posts. When you compare yourself with others, you are essentially taking where you're at and where they're at and saying, I'm not good enough because they have had more experience, they've had more time, or they're in a different situation than me. But really, you can't compare yourself with somebody else. Everybody's on the same path, different points in the path, though they may be, we're all heading the same direction. And, and something that, that you should really consider and really think about when, when this idea of comparing yourself with others and trying to avoid that is, is to think about personal records. You know, my brother, uh, when I was growing up, he was on the track team in, in high school. And, you know, he wasn't a very competitive guy. And I was always a really competitive person. And one thing I really took from him was after the track meets, he would say, oh, hey, I beat my personal record today. Uh, you know, oh, I, I did better than I did the last time that I did this race or that I did this long jump or whatever uh, activity he was doing at the track meet. And I always remember being a little bit, you know, shocked by that because, you know, in my head I was thinking, well, you didn't win any races. In fact, you didn't even place very well. <laughs> you didn't, do, you know, do incredibly well as far as competition goes. But he was always so proud because he was beating his personal records. He was doing better than the way he did last time. And I've learned a lot from my brother in that respect. And I hope you learn a lot from him too and think about that for a second. If you're better than you were the day before at your jazz playing, at your music, you're in a great place. That's a great thing. That means you're doing doing well on your terms, not on someone else's terms on your terms, okay? And that's so important to remember. So keep in mind this idea of personal records. Don't be hard on yourself. Don't compare yourself to others. Don't be, uh, don't attack your playing. Don't attack who you are. Don't don't make the mistake as well of getting all your self-worth from your music. That was a mistake I made is basically making the equivalent of how well I play is how good of a person I am. You know, sometimes psychologically in the human brain, we can start tying these things together and that's a very negative thing. So don't do that. Don't be hard on yourself. It's not worth it. It's not going to help you become a better musician. So don't even go there. So just avoid that at all costs. So that's what I wish someone would have told me and, and helped me with. Don't be so hard on yourself. It took me a long journey to get out of that mindset. Okay, the next thing I want to say is practice hard. Don't allow yourself to settle for mediocrity, okay? Don't forget that you need to pay your dues. Spend lots of time in the practice room honing your craft. Very important. And you may not always see results 
immediately when you're practicing hard. In fact, oftentimes when we're really involved in something, when we're really putting a lot of focus, energy, and attention on something, sometimes we don't actually see the growth. It's hard for us to see the growth until we step back. In fact, I find times when I'm in a, a period of really hard practice and then I have to go on a vacation for a week or two or perhaps I uh, other you know issues in my life pull me away from the practice room. When I come back, I'm always shocked by the improvement. I'm always shocked by, oh, I, I feel like better than I was before because I was able to step back for a second and see that improvement. So you may not always see the improvement right away, but practice hard, time and pressure. That's what it takes, okay? Time and pressure, that's what it takes. Don't forget it. So practice hard and and don't forget that that in order to achieve anything you have to practice. I mean, learning jazz Becoming a better musician, it doesn't come cheap or easy. You have to put in the work. There's no way around it. There's no shortcuts. Okay, so practice hard. Okay, the next thing that I want to say, this this piece of advice, uh, which in a lot of ways I did take into consideration, but I saw a lot of my uh, friends not doing this, and that is jam hard. Or in other words, play with other musicians every chance you get okay every chance you get because that's where the real learning comes in especially in a jazz situation because jazz is all about community jazz is social music so you need to be playing with other jazz musicians to be networking and to be learning how to play as a collective that's really where the real education comes in so Sometimes you need to get out of the practice room and stop saying, ah, I need to do this a little better first before I start playing. No, no. Get rid of all those excuses. Get out there and start playing, whether it be just with one other musician, whether it be with two other musicians, whether it be at a public jam session, whether it be at a private jam session that you set up for yourself. Find a community of musicians and play with them often. Maybe you get some gigs. Perfect. That's the best way is you actually are getting paid and actually doing a professional job and practicing at the same time. That's amazing. That's what you should be shooting for. The real improvement, the real deal is when you're playing with other musicians on the bandstand. That's where it's at. So every chance you get, if someone says, hey, I got a jam session going on, if you can make it to that jam session, be there. Okay, be there because this is where you're really going to improve. Playing with other jazz musicians or other musicians is incredibly important for your growth. Okay, incredibly important for your growth. So jam hard, go out there and play with others. Now, this next one might seem uh, like a little bit of a strange advice. Uh, and this actually was advice that was given to me when I was uh, much younger from a professional jazz musician, jazz pianist from Seattle named Bill Anshell. And I, at the time, also thought it was kind of interesting advice because it, in fact, had nothing to do with practicing, with playing music, with playing jazz or anything like that. And his advice that he gave me was to travel. To travel, to literally uh, take opportunities, if it was possible, to go somewhere else, to go to another country, to go to another city, to see something else and experience. And that's really the key word right there is experience, okay? Musicians, artists, we need experience to create. We need inspiration to create. And for me, uh, traveling, I took his, his advice really literally because I also love to travel. Not everybody likes to travel. I like to travel. Um, and I actually took as many opportunities as I could to travel. And travel really has inspired me. And in fact, many of the songs that I write have to do with locations or people that I have met in my travels or the different places that I have lived. So traveling and, and experiencing different things can give you inspiration, but it's not really just about traveling. What it's really about is experiencing, experiencing different things in your life, okay? It could be you have the opportunity to go to an art museum. Go check out that art museum. Basically, you need to be living life outside of music, and most people are doing that, but not everybody is, trust me. Especially, I'm talking to uh, some of the you know jazz nerds 
that are younger uh, in college or in high school that are kind of stuck in their practice room and, and think that just practicing day in and day out is going to be all they need. Well, no, you need to get out. You need to experience new things because to, to, to really create art, you have to have those experience. You have to be drawing from inspiration. So I think it's kind of uh, a unique uh, piece of advice to give, but I think it's incredibly important. It's a it's great advice. It's something that uh, I really have stuck with. It's really inspired me as an artist, as a creative mind, as a musician. So I would encourage you to do that, to travel if that's your thing. And, and that's to me, one of the greatest ways to experience things outside of your normal reality, or just to open yourself up to new experiences and new ideas and new places to go ways to think about things okay so that's that advice there now my last piece of advice that i want to give today is perhaps one of the most important that i could possibly give and it's something that i definitely wish someone would have told me was okay uh because it was something that i was afraid of very very afraid of um especially when i was way too serious about music and I wasn't relaxing and I was being too hard on myself, I was really afraid of this. And so my advice to you is to allow yourself to fail, okay? Allow yourself to fail. I mean, falling down and scraping your knees, get your hands dirty and don't be afraid of heading into the unknown, okay? That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about playing in a situation that you may not be comfortable with, playing with musicians that you might be intimidated by, going out there and taking some risks, trying to play a song that maybe you not you're not quite prepared for. You know, things like this that are really challenging and you're not sure if you're going to do it well, but you're going to try your hardest and you may very well get humiliated. You may very well fall down, scrape your knees, and feel like you have failed. But that's a good thing if you take it the right way, okay? If you do it in a healthy way, you can pick yourself up, you can learn from the mistakes you made, and move on, okay? Move on in your playing. Okay, I didn't know these songs. I really need to know these songs better so I don't sound like a fool next time. Well, good. It's going to give you some reason to go into the practice room and work a little harder, I'm not very good at playing fast tempos, okay? Get in there and work on fast tempos because that was embarrassing. Uh, this jazz musician on the jam session told me that I wasn't doing this or I wasn't doing that. Okay, let's not take it too personally. Let's just go and work on it. And that's all you need to do. Allow yourself to fail in your music. And it's hard for most people, including me, to get to that place where we're able to fail and feel comfortable with it and move on from it. It's something that every human, in no matter what part of their life, we have a hard time accepting failure. We just don't want to fail. We want to be accepted. We want to look good. We want to be successful. But in order to be successful, oftentimes we need to fail. And I really find that is true in music and especially in jazz. So get up. Don't let failure defeat you because it's in these moments where the real growth starts to happen. When you feel like you're starting to drown, just keep swimming. Okay? Just keep swimming. Allow yourself to fail. And the next time you feel like you have failed in your music or in your jazz playing, stop yourself for a second and try not to beat yourself up. <laughs> That's the challenge. Try not to beat yourself up. Try to smile about it. Try to laugh about it and keep a mental note of what you want to work on in order to get better. It's a hard place to be, but if you're at least aware of this, if you're aware of these things, it's a step in the right direction. And that's the way I always treat it. That's the way I always treat failure is I'm just going to be aware of it right now. And then I'm going to move on and do my best to fix what mistakes I made in that current situation. Okay. So don't be afraid to fail. All right, that's all for our show today. I want to thank you for joining us. I want to thank you for listening in. And I want to hear from you. What advice do you wish someone would have given you years ago? Or what advice would you give someone right now from your current experiences? 
So if you're on the website, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below. Would love to hear from you. This is a jazz community. We're all here to share with each other, not just me. And remember, if you got any value from today's podcast episode, consider adding value back by leaving us a one-time monthly or annual donation. If you're on the website, you can click the support button below. If you're not, if you're listening on iTunes or YouTube, you can go to learnjazzstandards.com slash support and help us out there. We really appreciate your help in continuing the production of this podcast. Okay, we are going to have episode 33 coming up next week, and I look forward to seeing you then. Mm -hmm.